OpenAI now rolls out GPT-4 Turbo to paid chat GPT users, but there's more. They're also providing this, and we'll get back to it in just a second. As Sam Albin's back saying GPT-4 now significantly smarter and more pleasant to use. When writing of chat GPT, responses will be more direct, less verbose, and use more conversational language. Is everyone happy? Was this worth the wait? Well, Jimmy Apples isn't. Me saying, this isn't it. There's still more waiting. At the same time, they're also open sourcing this. So this is a lightweight library for evaluating language models. They're open sourcing it so they can be transparent about the accuracy numbers we're publishing alongside our latest models. Starting with the GPT-4 Turbo 2024, April 9th. So that's this new model that was released. Now they're showing their results here on some of the more well-known tests. It looks like some of them have a pretty big leap upwards. GPQA, a challenging data set of multiple choice questions written by domain experts in biology, physics, and chemistry. This is meant to be challenging for PhDs pursuing studies in those fields. Here's an example question. Methyl cyclopenta. You know what? We're not going to read the sample question. Just assume these questions are hard. But the point is this new GPT-4 Turbo model is significantly smarter in some of these. The only one that's slightly trending down as far as I can tell is the MMLU. Now, as we've covered before, the MMLU has some issues. As people have pointed out, there are some mistakes on there. And in general, some of these tests, the results can't be faked. There could be some shenanigans going on if, for example, the model trains on the data in those tests. If they train on the answers, they'll be more likely to pass it. It doesn't mean that the model is better in general. It's just better able to pass that specific test. So there's a lot of debate about which tests to use, how relevant they are actually to how good the model is. Here on this channel, we do look at them. We look at them to kind of gauge initially how good the model is, but more often than not, we look at the chatbot arena where all these models do get out to see who is the best. Users from all of the world test those models. They don't know which one's which. It's a blind test and they select the one they prefer. For a long, long time, GPT-4 was the king until very, very recently when Claude 3 Opus overtook it as the number one model with an arena ranking of 1256. In the last ranking I saw, I think Claude 3 Opus was a few points above the next best GPT-4 model. However, the king is dead. Long live the king because GPT-4, this new edition that just rolled out, once again takes the number one spot with a ranking of 1261. Now that might change because notice that's only less than 9,000 votes cast for, for tests containing GPT-4. The rest of the models have mostly like 50,000 or more votes. Command R plus has 23,000. It's one of the newer models as well. But I think the big point is that we don't have kind of one system that everybody trusts to test these models. We all kind of have our own ways, our own prompts that we tend to go to, to find out how well a model behaves. I have my own set of prompts that I run to test new models. Matthew Berman has his own set of prompts that he runs. Here's somebody pitching him and a new sophisticated LLM model that calculates how quickly shirts dry and how many killers are left in the room. I think he's convinced. The joke is that he tends to use these prompts to, to kind of stress test a model when it comes out and everybody has their own. But the point is we don't have one that we can kind of use to compare across a diverse set of tests how good a model is. So OpenAI open sources this one, this lightweight library for evaluating language models. And in the readme they start, evals are sensitive to prompting, and there's a significant variation in the formulations used in recent publications and libraries. Some use few shot prompts or role-playing prompts like you're an expert software programmer. And they're noting here that these are just kind of carryovers, these little tricks that we used to use for base models. So with ChatGPT, it's a chat tune model, right? It kind of goes back and forth and answers your question. It's been given certain instructions on how to interact with you. Base models don't really have that, so you have these little tricks. But the point is everybody might have a different bag of tricks that they're using. And so for this library, they're emphasizing the zero-shot chain of thought setting. Zero-shot meaning you don't give it examples. So you don't give it a few examples of how to solve the problem and then give it the problem. You just say, solve this problem. And chain of thought, typically you're asking it to think through something step by step. And then you give simple instructions like solve the following multiple choice problems. And they think that this prompting technique is a better reflection of the model's performance in realistic usage, how normal people will use it. And currently they have the following evals, MMLU, MAF, GBQA, DROP, MGSM, Human Eval, and MMMU. And then they give the simple instructions for installing something like this. So I'm going to install that and mess around with it, see 
see what it does. It seems like it's an attempt to kind of standardize how we prompt these models that we're all kind of comparing apples to apples and not using different prompting styles that may skew the results one way or another. In other news, OpenAI has fired two AI safety researchers for allegedly leaking information, including an ally of chief scientist Ilya Sutskever, of the former chief scientist. Apparently, one of them has ties to the effective altruism movement. With that said, my name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.